great inch. Well, the good news for that is we could definitely counterspell that. So, Spectral Sailor. Pop up Brightborn. And then with that, <laughs> this is what you want to see, everybody. The Flare of Denial. So, we're going to sacrifice our Spectral Sailor. All right. Whew, that was too close. Okay. There we go, everybody. <laughs>Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, it is finally time, everybody. We can finally begin playing with the cards that have debuted in Modern Horizons 3 on Arena. So, without further ado, join me in the timeless format to play with one of our cheapest decks we've ever put together, infused with some of the most powerful counterspells you can play in a deck today I am calling Timeless Tempo. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So, our tempo deck today is all mono blue. We're looking at an average mana curve of about 1.7, and we're looking at it rocking 21 creatures, 16 instants, 4 enchantments, and only 19 lands. Mono Blue Tempo is definitely not a new concept to this channel. In fact, we've done quite a few variants over time. However, I figured this is now our opportunity to go all out once we now had a brand new counterspell that's basically free. But the tricky part is, which deck is this free counterspell going to be good in? Good question! I believe that Mono Blue Tempo is probably the best variant to take advantage of this free counterspell. So that's where we are at today. Real quick disclaimer, if you do hear that I don't sound as well as normal, it's because right now I'm actually feeling a little sick, but we're going to find a way to push through this, so bear with me on this. Any case, going over the creatures in the one drop slot, you have, of course, Spectral Sailor here. Great, it has Flash. Mid-game, of course, you can pay for it to then draw a card, so awesome for us. Terramander here is going to be able to pump itself up with its adaptability. ability. You can make it cheaper as long as we have a bunch of counter spells in the graveyard, and then ideally you can finish off your opponent with a flyer. Or, if you need an early game flyer, you also have here Delver of Secrets. We played this card many times, I absolutely love this card for what it does. Ideally, if you can play it in the early game to flip it into a 3-2 flyer, it really does a lot of great early game damage. Our only creature in the 2-drop slot is going to be Brineborn Cutthroat. Again, it may not seem like it's uh, super powerful and timeless, but again, with all the counter spells that we have, it will get very big very quickly. Having the flash ability makes it much easier for us to cast when we need it to, and also it can be a great surprise blocker against our opponent who may not anticipate we might have a counter spell or a pump spell in our hand. And then finally, in the 3 drop slot here we have brazen borrower really awesome because it's a two in one card with its bounce ability of petty theft on the instant side as an adventure and also again it has flash and it's a flyer although it can only block creatures with flying we actually don't need to worry too much about that because we just want to be able to get this in as a tempo play to hopefully finish off our opponent circling back over to the support that we're going to need in the one drop slot we have curious obsession really awesome it's our only enchantment aura you've seen this i'm sure many times if you've played magic recently where it gets a plus one plus one pump to our creature and of course as long as we deal combat damage with that creature we can draw a card speaking of of card drop we also are going to utilize consider here has surveil and it allows us to draw a card really awesome great for us at any point in the game as far as the remainder of the cards you basically are going to see what what you would expect which is going to be a lot of counter spells so with the one drop you have spell pierce here in the two drop slot this is again where we have our very powerful counter spells where we have memory lapse here where we can counter spell then bounce it back to our opponent's hand putting it on top of their library or they could put it into their graveyard then of course the one and only mana drain here again very very powerful for what it does but again we are a budget deck so only two is all we can afford forward that extra colorless mana that may produce may not seem like it's going to do much but for our deck remember that again we have a, quite a few utility creatures so that could actually be very helpful for us to then utilize spectral sailor's ability or terramander's ability and then finally in the three drop slot this is going to be the star of our show and the one reason why we actually brought this whole deck together in the first place which is going to be flare of denial so let's talk about this card for just a moment here flare of denial is actually a three mana counter spell that reads you may sacrifice a non-token blue creature rather than pay this spell's mana cost and of course you just get the counter of the spell ideally what you want to Sacrifice is mostly going to be either the Terramander, your Delver of Secrets, or your Spectral Sailor in the early part of the game. So this way you can basically can play it for free. There is, of course, one other creature that I didn't mention, but I kind of technically use it as support versus actually being a creature. And that's going to be one of our other three drops, which is Hydroelectric Specimen here. So I'll actually talk about this card also for just a moment. Hydroelectric Specimen is a 3-mana 1-4 weird that has Flash, and it reads, When the Specimen enters the battlefield, you may change the target of target instant or sorcery spell with a single target to the Specimen itself. So ideally, it just helps you read direct a spell to it ideally get it to then take away a removal spell on one of your more critical creatures and then guide it to it not to mention because this is a creature you can also use flare of denial to target it and then also counter it as well so you can sometimes be a two for one combo and it's actually really sweet when it does go off and then finally, our only other kind of pseudo-tempo play will be Sink into Stupor. So we'll also talk about this real quick. 
Sika de Stupor is a 3 mana instant that allows us to either return target spell or non-land permanent to an opponent's hand. Ideally then, this is going to be great as a tempo play for those spells that are uncounterable, or again, think of it as the fifth copy of Brazen Borrower to bounce something back to our opponents. Going over the lands, it's as simple as can be because again, we are super budget, but this is actually still effective for us even in the timeless format. So 17 islands is all you need, a single copy of Mystic Sanctuary to bounce back at least one of your counter spells to the top of your library, and I know I didn't mention this earlier, but technically you're sinking to the Stupor, of course, and your Hydroelectric Specimen also be considered lands if you need to in a pinch. But the only reason why we have one of each is because although it is tempting, of course, to then add more copies, remember, if you need this land to be untapped, you're going to have to pay three life, and we don't want to have to get too greedy where we might put ourselves in a bad situation. Going over the lands, it's as simple as can be because, again, we are super budget, but this is actually still effective for us even in the timeless format. So 17 islands is all you need, a single copy of Mystic Sanctuary to bounce back at least one of your counter spells to the top of your library, and I know I didn't mention this earlier, but technically you're sinking to the Stupor, of course, and your Hydroelectric Specimen also be considered lands if you need to in a pinch. But the only reason why we have one of each is because, although it is tempting, of course, to then add more copies, remember, if you need this land to be untapped, you're going to have to pay three life, and we don't want to have to get too greedy where we might put ourselves in a bad situation. If you are interested in taking this in the best of three, here's going to be your best options for that in the sideboard. So Tormod's Crypt here, we want a free spells as much as we can because again, we are very low to the ground. So that's going to be our best graveyard hate for us. Aether Spellbomb, if you need a colorless way to bounce back something to an opponent's hand, this is going to be your best option for that. Tested Talents can then counter an instant or sorcery spell and then exile the other extra copies out of their library. Beijing Veil here, this is mostly again for go-wise strategies against us, so then you can just kind of soften up every creature they have just to buy us at least an extra turn. Defabricate here, we really don't have any other cheaper options for us in terms of having a counter activated or triggered ability, so this is going to be our best option for that. Filter Out, this is again for mostly those greedy types of non-creature decks, so we can bounce everything back to their hand. And then finally, if you need a different creature to kind of help close out the game that has also built-in protection, I highly recommend Talarian Terror here. It may look expensive at 7 mana, but remember, it will get cheaper for each instant or sorcery card in our graveyard. But otherwise, that's the whole deck for you in a nutshell. Is it possible for one of the cheapest tempo decks that we've ever built to put together in the most powerful format with just a handful of powerful counter spells? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Well, there's only one way to find out, so I don't know about you, but I'm super excited to see how well this deck does. So let's take it into the timeless and see how it performs. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can we get a win with our Timeless Tempo deck? Well, the good news is we definitely have a couple of ways we can bring stuff in, but we don't have anything to kind of keep the momentum going. We're going to see if we can try to maybe draw into it. Alright, let's play Bloodstained Fire. They immediately sack it. Get themselves a Blood Crypt. Ragamon coming down. Well, I mean, that's fine. So, with that, we will just pass here with our first land. We're going to have to sacrifice one of our own creatures just to get that Ragamon out of here. I going to be super aggressive, though, with their mana base. Rackus Theater. So they will surveil. Fonsies. Okay. Well, obviously, this means we're probably going to lose our Consider or the Terramander. Yep, Terramander's gone. Bye-bye. So, Spectral Sailor coming down. Brimeborn Cutthroat. That might be helpful a little bit later on. We will not attack, because we don't want to give our opponent an idea that we have something else going on. Do we... No, we'll just wait. Alright. Enter Goblin. We will Brimeborn Cutthroat. Bring it in. Another land, which is fine. Alright, so with that, we will still not attack yet. We just need to kind of hopefully get at least one counter spell going, and we should be able to just kind of protect ourselves after that. Alright, they draw a card. There you go, swinging. They make a treasure. So we'll consider just to pump up the Brineborn. Hydroelectric specimen. That might be helpful for later, so we'll just keep that. And then special sailor number two. So now it's big enough to then take a hit here, so we can sponge the token. Okay, token's off the field. Proxa. I guess we'll throw away the other Spectral Sailor here. So with that... They sack. Not dead after all. Okay. It's fine, I guess. We'll discard the island. Maybe they sack again. We lose a life. 
Swamp Cycling for the troll. And down. Okay, well, big turn for our opponent there, but that's fine. We could still do what we need to do here. So we'll just swing with one creature. And we'll pass here. Okay, so. Fable transforms. Opponent has seven cards in the yard, so unfortunately we're gonna get Croc, so they're coming back right now. Okay. I mean, we'll just have to come sponge here for a bit, but we'll see if we can try to get around this. Throw away the Terramander. So, okay, Brazen Borrower is not the worst. No attacks yet. So, the only way we're going to get around this now is we will have to kind of bounce away Croaxa. It's off the field. We play it again. So it goes into the yard. We lose our weird. It's sack the wooded foothills. We're not really actually able to do much damage against them, but we are at least seeing that they are definitely getting very greedy with enemies. Swing with one creature. Sailor pushes them down to nine. Okay, Fable will now do its thing. Okay, they draw a card. Fury. That's a little scary. So. All four damage. Okay, so two damage on the Spectral Sailors, which is going to be, again, the, not the worst, but it is what it is. Okay. Do you swing opponents? They do. Okay. We'll block the token. Down token. Bolts. Okay. Well, all right. We'll have to bring this in. It's not high enough, unfortunately, to take deal with the lightning bolt, but we have to do what we have to do. So with that, we swing here. Opponent's dead in two turns. Is that enough? So, reflection on there, which is, okay. Well, this stinks. Fury is now going to be a problem in this format, so from what we can see here. Big swing here. Down to 10. Down to 2. Ouch. Okay. I'm starting to wonder, was it a mistake for them to bring in the elementals into Timeless? Yes, it was. A few moments later. Okay. Well, that was unfortunate, but I mean, hey, this is now the power level we're going to be at going forward with this format. Unless, of course, they choose to restrict certain cards. But let me know. Do you think they should be restricting the elementals in the future? I would love to hear from you from that. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can we out-tempo our opponent here in Timeless? Well, the good news is we do have some awesome tempo plays here, but our mana base is eh, it's a little awkward, again, with the Mystic Sanctuary. We'll still make it work with what we got. So let's go ahead, let's keep this. And what we'll do is we'll play an island, we'll play Double Secrets. If we can flip this, then we'll be in business. All right, island for our opponent. Oh, opponent is also playing Delver Secrets. Okay, well, game on, opponents. So we'll reveal first. So, <laughs> we got the first strike here. That's awesome. Mystic Sanctuary coming down. Terramander. If we have to, we can also sacrifice this in a pinch. So, we're ahead now at 17. Will our opponent flip? Oh, wow, they do too. Okay, well, game on, opponents. Actually, we'll let that reside. We need the Terramander to stay alive in case we need it. Okay, so... Now I think we should be set to go at this point, so I live down, we will play Terramander number two, so this could be our chump blocker if we need to in a pinch. Go swinging here, down to 13. Alright opponents, clock is ticking, we definitely have a pretty good lead right now. Okay, they opt, they consider, okay. That's fine. We're not worried about that. All right, another island. Potty gin. Okay, so we can't allow that to, to do its thing. So we will memory, memory lapse that. <laughs> okay. Okay, not too bad. Down to 14. I think at this point we should have the lead. So there not really should be anything that's going to stop us from doing our thing. Down to 8. Put another island down. What do you got, opponent? You actually have more cards than us in hand, but we definitely are going to have the edge here. Bring it on. Potty Jin again. So we're going to memory lapse that. 
<laughs> Sorry, opponent. You just are going to get denied. And there you go, everybody. That's basically it. I know it wasn't anything super flashy, but that's exactly what you want to do when you play Mono Blue Tempo. You just basically force them into a bad spot right there where they can't cast anything, and you basically get your win. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Well, the good news is we definitely have what we need to start drawing cards, but is that enough? We don't have a one drop. I still feel that we can keep this, though. But will it be enough against our opponent? We do at least have a spell pierce for the early part of the game here. So we'll see what our opponent's going to do. Elvish Mystic. Okay, so it might be Elves, which is fine. But we can slow them down a bit here. Elvish Mystic. Bouncing away the ramp. Forest. Elf coming down again. Second Elf coming down. All right, so we do have our Island, which is great. So here... What we can do is Brineborn Cutthroat and then Spell Pierce if we need to. Land of War Elves number three. I should say Land of War Elves number one, but you get it. Mana Dork number two, basically, or three. I don't know. Numbers are hard. Any case, we'll take the hit. How do we do this here? Actually, I think Raisin Borrow will probably be our best shot here. Arch Druid's Charm. Okay, well, I mean, it's fine too. So, how do we get out of this? Brazen Ball, we're here. We just gotta hopefully hit at least one counter spell. Draw a card. Okay, well that's not the worst. That's actually not too shabby. Flare of Denial here will be huge if we could just counter that Crater Hoof. Land of War Visionary. Alright, well I guess our opponent right now is now gonna go for the big... Trying to see if they can score big here. So we gotta race them before it's too late. Elvish Mystic. Wow, they're like a budget deck like we are. It's kind of it's kind of cute, actually. I guess we'll just put this down now. It doesn't really matter. We can take the hits. That's fine. We're down to 17. So we got plenty of time. That's not actually our issue. Our issue is just making sure we get counter spells so we can just protect against certain things we're going to do. So, let us put down another Curious Obsession. This is greedy, by the way, but I think this is going to be our best option of pushing through. You're down to 11. So we just got to race that Crater Hoof, which is a little scary. Got land. Come on, Counterspell. Okay. Not again the Counterspell I want to see, but we can use it. If we must. The Great Henge. Well, the good news for that is we could definitely Counterspell that. So, Spectral Sailor. Pop up Brightborn. And then with that, <laughs> this is what you want to see, everybody. The Flare of Denial. So, we're going to sacrifice our Spectral Sailor. All right. Whew. That was too close. Okay. There we go, everybody. <laughs> That's how you want to do it. Whew, cutting it close there with that dealing with that crater hoof before it came down, but we managed to push through. So that's what you want to do. That's how the deck is meant to be played. And there you have it, ready. So that was our Timeless Tempo deck for the Timeless Format. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? To be perfectly honest with you, I'm actually really surprised at how well it did. I was actually pretty satisfied overall, but of course, it is still only a couple days into Modern Horizons 3, so a lot of things are going to change very quickly. But the good news, of course, is you can still make adjustments to this deck as you need to. I still think with how it works, it should do at least decently well, all things considered, in the meta. Now, for those of you, of course, who are interested, and if you've watched this deep into the video, you, of course, are my true fire friends. And of course, as always, we're gonna show you right now how you can upgrade this deck and make it even more powerful than it currently is. Now, if you do wanna upgrade this deck, there are gonna be a lot of ways you can do it if you wanna to stick to the Tempo game plan, and it mostly just gonna mean that you might have to splash into another color to get the most, most powerful options. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna keep it simple, and we're only gonna to stick to just mono blue if that's what you're interested in. So with that, you're gonna get rid of your considers, you're gonna to upgrade to brainstorms here. This will allow you to draw three cards, and yes, you do have to rearrange the other two cards you get. However, with the fetch lands that we're now gonna upgrade into, this actually gives us a lot of sweet advantages to make sure that we get exactly what we need when we need it. You're gonna also add in some mana drains now, so this is gonna be the full playset of these. The colorless mana may seem like it's useless, but remember, as I mentioned earlier, you could take advantage of Terramander and Spectral Sailor with that extra mana that you're gonna be able to generate. You're also gonna get rid of your flip land, your moto land, if you will, and put in one single copy of Archmage's Charm here, just to help us again with some card draw, another extra counterspell that's expensive, but also gaining control of a non-land permanent that's a mana value of one or less in this format is actually very powerful to have, so we're just definitely going to keep those. You mostly don't have to change anything else in the deck, just kind of keep it as is. It does seem a little underpowered, but this is where your sideboard is going to come in as well. Speaking of those upgrades to your sideboard here, what you're going to be doing is you're going to trim a Tormod's Crypt, keep your Aether Spell Bombs, you're now going to add in Stifle as your counter to target activated or triggered abilities, keep the Bayeen Veil here, 
keep the test of talents and then also instead we're going to add in couples of graph diggers cage here really really sweet card to make sure that we can punish some of those decks out there that are trying to pull off some graveyard or library shenanigans and then you're going to take out your terrors and put it in instead thing in the eyes this is actually going to be a bit more of a better option for you against select decks out there that'll just bounce away everything to give you a full advantage of a powerful creature that can close out the game very very quickly and with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck overall. As you saw from today's videos, Tempo definitely has taken quite a few hits over the years as we've seen a lot more powerful cards that are either uncounterable or just have ways of getting around your counter spells. Having said that, though, when it does go off, it is very demoralizing for your opponent because nobody really wants to see their stuff get countered time and time again. However, if you are a fan of counter spells and if you are a fan of tempo plays and if you're a fan of playing one of these decks where you just get slightly bit more annoying as each turn goes by and you just drive your opponent crazy by all means definitely give this deck a try and i assure you when you play this in the timeless format against some of those powerful decks out there you'll be very surprised at what this deck is going to be capable of doing you'll be very happy with how it turns out beating down some of the most powerful cards out there in the format and you will definitely not be disappointed that's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!